Hello, I'm John Waters, and I'm supposed to announce... Q! Q. I got something here. I want to see if you know what this is. A Q. A Q. That's right. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Hello and welcome from deep inside Jolly Rogers studio once again. This is the Q Filmcast. We are the show which brings to you, if you don't know, our review of a particular film currently streaming on Netflix Instant. Every week we gather here, Jolly Rogers studio, tell you what we thought of it. Yep. Pretty simple, isn't it? Simple premise, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, in the hopes that we all may agree, which, <laughs> nah, it's not going to happen. Well, it happens every now and then. It happens every once in a while. Yeah, I'm going to go with the old uh, standby, agree to disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's typically the way it goes, but right. maybe not. Maybe not. It's a new show, a new episode. There you go. We're back again, so let's see if it's different. Absolutely. Uh, and then, by the way, to our new listeners, if you don't know, every show we conclude with a top three list inspired by the movie in question. So here we are, guys. Q Filmcast. Uh, quickly, how to keep up with us if you don't know that as well, which I don't see how that's humanly possible. It's not. Uh, we're talking about uh, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, etc. It doesn't really matter. Mm, nope. We're out there. That's it. Yeah. You have a preference? It doesn't matter. We're there for you. <laughs> but Savage, we don't need to tell them. They just go to one place. It's the Q Filmcast dot net. If you go there, you're all set. I'm Michael, along with James Hard Sub Savage. What's up, Maestro? Oh, I'm doing okay, Savage. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How was yeah. your week? Uh, how was my week? Yes. Look at this. He's asking me how my week was. Well, let me tell you this much, Savage. Uh-oh. First of all, this week, my dad never once sat on my face while opening his Christmas presents. <laughs> well, that's always good. <laughs> and it's not Christmas time. And so. he wasn't singing Jingle Balls. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, a sniper did not uh, shoot me in the nuts. <laughs> mm. <laughs> These are all the good bells. things. Uh, Max, uh, I don't know how your week went, but mine was especially great because a gerbil did not crawl up my rear end. <laughs> that's always... A plus. Speaking of which, let's get right over to the yeah, producer. Right. Let's introduce the producer next. <laughs> so I'm a sniper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, since we're on yeah. the subject. Yeah, sniper, yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking of, Adam. Uh, greatest <laughs> producer, by the way, in the history of this Q film cast. Yeah. In he's the right there. He's yeah. right there. He's, he's there every week, and he shows up. He's way over there. Yeah. He shows up. <laughs> he shows up. <laughs> At his own house. At his own place. Right. Right. Adam, how you doing, man? I'm not bad. Yeah? yeah. Are you demented? Forever. I've been told that before. If you were demented, <laughs> would you be demented forever? Always. Enough clues. Let's yeah. go over to Max Gumbo Johnson. Here you are, sir. The backbone of this show yeah. at times. Oh, don't mention back. My yeah. back is killing me today. Yeah. He's like the Yoda of the show. Yeah. He's been holding his waters yeah. over there. You're like the Luke Skywalker. <laughs> You're like the uh, you know the forces with you, Savage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the all-seeing, all-knowing Max Gumbo Johnson. Well, I, I appreciate that. You like that? I, I, who doesn't like being compared to Yoda? Uh, you, you picture yourself more as a solo guy, right? Han Solo? Uh, who doesn't want to be Han Solo? <laughs> but, you know, Yoda's wise. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. he's like a ninja. We're getting <laughs> into nerd little territory. frog ninja. <laughs> hey, you watch what you say about Yoda, man. I will come across this table like Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the frog You know, he's kind of looking like Greedo right now, sitting yeah. across the table for me. Yeah, All yeah, Greedo I, was to, I was actually going to compare him to Greedo, especially when he's around the ladies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That seemed that, that seemed funner, funnier to me than it should have. Yeah, actually, funny. we're nerds. Yeah, it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> uh, so here we are, guys. There's your introductions. Yeah. There's your clues. Yeah. We're so, watching Star Wars. Patch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought. No, I didn't see hear anything right. about Lemmy Winks either, Adam. Right, so don't right. worry about that. But uh, I think we gave enough clues to possibly figure out the sure. movie this week. And let's just reveal it. Sure. Uh, this week, it's a James Hard Sub Savage selection. Mm-hmm. So, Surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> it's always. <laughs> It's always a kind of a roll of the dice sort of situation, Savage. Yeah, it, apparently it's turned into that. It, it's not by intention. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't go for the Criterion Collection often, does he, Max? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal, sir. What film did we watch, and which film are we going to talk about uh, tonight? A John Waters film, which is yeah. admittedly an acquired taste. Uh, uh, Cecil B. Demented. Cecil B. Demented. You have to admit, stop right here. Great title. It is. It is. It's not bad. Yeah. It's an allusion to Cecil B. DeMille, for yeah. those of you who might not have known, <laughs> just to kind of fill you guys in. Right, yeah. If you uh, even remember who that is or yeah. what he did. Or, oh. you know. who, yeah, Cecil B. DeMille, come on, man. Yeah, most people don't. <laughs> well, enlighten us real quick. Most people that would be listening to this show know who he is. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you what he directed. It's, it's a name that probably everybody's, oh, it's Cecil. I understand yeah. the play on the word here, Cecil yeah. B. DeMille. Yeah. 
Let's move on with it. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Yeah, DeMille. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Everybody knows that line. <laughs> We're talking about Cecil B. Demented, yes. the 2000 film from writer-director John Waters. Is there another word we should put with him as along with writer Auteur. and director? Auteur. Yes. Yeah, something that's, like that. That's, that's a good one. Pencil-thin mustache. That's another three. Indie. Yeah, indie. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's a midnight movie maestro. <laughs> yeah. That, like the indie like indie that. crowds love that guy. Yeah. 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 He looks like a Dapper Dan man, too. He is a Dapper Dan man. A little bit of brill cream in the hair. Author. He's written a couple books. Yeah. I've yeah. read a couple he of them. He starred in The Simpsons. And he seems like a, like a genuinely cool dude to hang around. I mean, I, I would go. He probably has a real uh, swanky kind of party. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. That's like, a perfect word for him. Swanky. He's he just swanky. seems swanky. Swanky. Like, he's like old Hollywood swank yeah. kind of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about this film. This film stars Melanie Griffith, yeah. a very young Stephen Dorff. I don't know if he's very young. Well, he was young into his career. I think. Was he not? No, he did Blade at that point. Yeah. Did he? What, yeah. what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> Alicia Witt. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Grenier, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, from Entourage. Not to mention Maggie Gyllenhaal, Kevin Nealon, Eric Roberts, Ricky Lake, and Roseanne Barr. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, Mike Shannon. Yeah. Did you catch that? In the, in the I knew credits? you would I love that. I knew yeah. you'd love Mike that. Mike Shannon. I was watching, I was like, is that Michael Shannon's brother or something? I was like, wait a minute, his name is Mike. It's Michael Shannon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's wrong with me? It's like if you go back in the scent of a woman, it was Phil S. Hoffman. Right, right. Yeah. And Patty Hearst, Fidget's mom. <laughs> oh, know? that's right. Fidget. All right, let's get into this, guys. Right. Written and directed by John Waters. You know, it's my first John Waters sit through movie. Really? You guys keep uh, telling me, oh, you got to see this guy, yeah, especially the film about the transsexual that eats poop. Well, it's And I like, yeah, I want to get about. right to that. I didn't know what the movie's about. Well, this is my first John Waters film. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so you're breaking me in here. I don't know if in a good way or a bad right. way. You've never seen Cry Baby or Hairspray. I've seen. Here's the thing. I've seen pieces of these films. Right. Uh, I don't think I've. I don't know how that even happened, but I, I've never sat down and said to myself, "John Waters time. Going to watch a John Waters movie." Well, until now. Until now. <laughs> well, welcome to the club, sir. <laughs> uh, written and directed by him. Selected by James Hard Sub Savage. And let's get into the meat on the bone, as we say. <clears throat> let's talk about ratings first, Max. What do you say? I say let's talk about ratings first. Let's do this, and this happens every week. Okay. Doesn't change here. None. We're going to do this. IMDb, Max, and you know something points something. Use us. Mm. Going to crit- uh, critique the critics. IMDb, I'll say uh, 6.4. You know, users Ooh. love some John Waters now? I don't know. I'm just taking a guess. He's close, 6.2. <laughs> oh. That's not ah. bad. Uh, yeah. Not too far off. Yeah, pretty close there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. And yeah, the dog they're... can't speak, so I'm going over to James Hard Sub Savage. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. What do you think the critics and users gave right, critics, percentage wise? Critics, critics, uh, probably, I'm sticking that, like 6.3. Uh, the critics, uh, 52%. Ooh. So you have to give a percentage here. Savage. Oh, okay. Yeah. 50. 52%. Yeah, uh, and what about the users? Uh, 63%. 67%. Oh, look at that. Hmm. It's, it's not, not a Coriolanus wing. So. No. Uh, oh, and by the way, guys, how did I forget this? We're going to get into what this film is. We're going to talk about our reviews. We're going to talk about scenes. Right. But let's talk about what it inspired. We're going to wrap this thing up at the end with top three directors' names we would get tattooed on our body. Absolutely. We're going to talk about where we would get them to, uh, tattooed. Oh, I, I didn't know anything about that. About that. I'm going to ask you. Okay, uh. you want that name tattooed, <laughs> and where would you put it? But let's get into the film sure. here. Cecil B. Demented, John Waters, written and directed is a film that goes behind the scenes with a group of obsessed cinema t- terrorists whose goal in life is to avenge the crass sins of commercial movie culture through acts of brazen filmmaking and vigilant, I'm sorry, vigilante outlaw <laughs> cinema retribution. As the movie begins, the title character, Cecil B. Demented, and his sprocket holes, the name of the gang, <laughs> kidnap Honey Whitlock, played by Melanie Griffith, who is a beloved Hollywood movie star visiting Baltimore, for the premiere of her latest blockbuster. Once Whitlock is in their, is their prisoner, Demented and his horny, tattooed crew, hmm, where can I find that? <laughs> Immediately go into production on Raving Beauty, the ultimate underground movie in which Whitlock is forced to play the insane owner of a failed art the- theater. Armed with lights, cameras, heavy artillery, and courage to burn, Cecil B. Demented and his guerrilla production team rake havoc on the Baltimore budding film scene. Hitting targets from the Maryland Film Commission to penetrating the high security of a major big budget sequel. Cecil B. Demented, 2000. We're going to come back and talk about this John Waters written and directed piece. Here you go. 6.46 p.m. in the name of underground cinema. Baltimore! 
Baltimore, Maryland. All Hollywood has come east for the premiere of Some Kind of Happiness. There's Mayor Fenwick leading the procession of stars to the gala event. And now the moment everyone's been waiting for, Honey Whitlock, starlet to the stars, gorgeously dressed, makes her grand entrance. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. 7.02 p.m. When the word is given, we will seize the cinema. I am Cecil B. Demented! And this is a kidnapping! <laughs> Hello, Miss Whitlock. I am Cecil B. Demented, and I'm your new director. I'd like you to meet your co-stars. I call them the Sprocket Holes. We ain't got three bucks, no budget, no craft service, man. Action! We don't take no notes, no budget. Yeah, we gotta start this for real. Cut! I just am not motivated. How's this for motivation, huh? Cecil B. Demented, you can never stop Hollywood. You're one of us now. You know what to say. Say it. Demented forever. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Demented. Okay, and we're back. Hugh Filmcast talking about what you just heard right there. Cecil B. Demented 2000 from the year 2000. It's not Cecil B. Demented 2000. <laughs> no. It was made in the year 2000. Right, Sorry, right, let me right. clarify. Written right. and directed by John Waters. Did you know? Let's talk about this, man. Did you know that John Waters had an interview with him published before the film in which the headline referred to him as, to him as Cecil B. Demented? That's what they called him in this interview. He says, hey, that's a great name for a title of a movie. I'm going <laughs> to use it. about right. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds like I, John Waters. Yeah. So like, that's where he was inspired. When someone called him this, he says, I'm going to make a movie with that title. That's so meta. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing these days, isn't it? Meta. Yeah. Meta. Yeah. yeah. Meta. Everything's meta. Yeah. What about beta? I don't know. No, no. It's not the same thing at all. <laughs> Max, did you know that Maggie Gyllenhaal handpicked a Jonathan Ferrucci out of the extras to be the guy she makes out with in the film's climax? <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, if you get to pick the person you're going to make out with as an extra, you might as well pick them. Yeah, yeah. you may as well, yeah. I, like, eh, I don't like her looks. Uh, her? Yeah. Yeah. make out with her. Yeah. Next, next, next. Ooh, you. Right. Uh, producer, Yo. did you know that the drive-in theater at the end of the movie is ben- Benji's Drive-In, yeah, which is still in service and has been threatened to be shut down for almost 10 years, but uh-huh. somehow still stays in business? It better stay in business. It's in Baltimore. By the way, great. Yeah, well, it may not be in business. Probably burned down now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hey, uh, Savage. Yeah. John Waters wrote up the lyrics for the spoof rap song and soundtrack during the screenwriting phase. He wrote this, but the music uh, supervisor couldn't find any rappers who were familiar with filmmaking lingo. They couldn't. Ice Cube wasn't available. Nope. Well, it had to be a chick rapper, and those are few and far between. Did you know that Queen most Latifah was big back then? (laughs) Yeah, she's still big. (laughs) Did you know that most of the crew got sick while doing filming on the set? They blamed it on uh, pneumonia, they said, but a lot of people thought it was the oysters. <laughs> they had a plethora of oysters available yeah. at all times. I should have got the one with the yellow bands on. Those are, those are the ones you get. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about how we're going to rate this film, guys. Sure. There's, your, there's your trivia, your facts, your figures. Let's talk about how we're going to rate this film. Right. Uh, because, you know, Max, we don't use thumbs up or thumbs down. No, we don't. That is so crunk. <laughs> so crunk. It's so demented. Right, it's so demented. Let's talk about how we're going to rate this thing, though. I can't remember. Slurped oysters. Slurped oysters. All right. Make people sick. Let's hope we don't make you sick. sick. Get a listeria or something. That's so good. I would never eat an oyster. I mean, I've had I've had them in my mouth twice. I've spit them out on the floor. I don't understand. Yeah, I've never eaten a raw they're oyster. So disgusting. Oh, they're delicious. Yeah, they would be mm. to you. Let's talk about uh, what we think of this film. We know what the critics think. Right. Uh, let's go straight over to James Hearts of Savage. Yeah. Your film, Set the Pace. What yeah. you got? Well, How John Waters is an acquired taste, uh, for sure. It's like flavored water. You know, either you like it or you don't. He's got his own thing. I figure I'm going to be the high guy, so I'll, I'll go high with seven. You're going to go high with seven. I, I, I assume that I'm going to be high. Yeah. <laughs> you can assume? <laughs> right. All right. Let me right. see. Uh, I don't know. I'm but come... really, I'm probably a six. Either I'm throwing rocks at your treehouse or I'm up there with you. I don't know. Right. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, the mystery of what's coming up next. Right. I I'm sure it's not. Adam, the producer. Let's go straight around this way. Let's jump in there, Adam. You're yeah, next, man. Yeah. What are you going to give? How many slurped oysters do the savage picked Cecil be demented? 
I got caught up in this movie. I love it. I'm going straight seven. All right. Uh-oh. Seven, seven. Look at that. Look at that. It's always it's always suspect when Adam agrees with you. <laughs> you feel kind of dirty, don't you? Yeah, it's like, bit. oh, I feel uh, a little dirty over Adam. Uh, likes ooh, he's something. Kind of, ooh. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with yeah. you, Adam. I know. Uh, all right. You know, it's you nah, and me. He's you, not joking. He means it. <laughs> producer, it's you and me and Harold Maud. You know, there's that. never yeah. been a truer word than spoken in jest. <laughs> yeah. No, I can uh, tell by Max's body language. Yeah, you know, Max, you, you have no poker face at all. <laughs> have you noticed that? I don't play poker. Okay. Uh, what you going to give? How many slurped five. oysters? Five, five slurped oysters. This That's... was a maudlin middle of the road movie that had great ideas and just couldn't pull it off well. Okay. And as much as I like John Waters, I yeah. hate to say that, but eh, guy every now and then makes us stinky. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen better waters. You've been. In, oh my God! Yeah. You've been in warmer waters. More comfortable ones. It's like Woody Allen. I prefer his older, funnier films. <laughs> yeah. His <laughs> good really movies. Do. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. All right, guys, up five. to me. Yeah. You're going to go five. We have a seven. We have a seven. We have a five. And now right. it's up to me. And you know what I do? I just kind of get my stuff out. Here we go. Well, in theory, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten better at this. You know that. Okay, all right. What an asinine juvenile example of an unhinged movie that flails about without regard. Now, let me tell you why I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I uh, Because I, I kind of did. I'm actually going to champion this dumb film. First thing, <laughs> this is a satire, which I've stated yeah. in previous episodes, is my favorite brand of humor. I love sa- slapstick parody. Uh, it's always a good foothold for me mm-hmm. for, for, for comedy, okay? But let's be clear. This ain't no Dr. Strangelove. No. This is junk food, man. <laughs> Didn't say it wasn't tasty at times. I'm right. just saying it's a Slim Jim and a bag of Doritos, okay? <laughs> it's not big budget anything, but so what? I don't care. This had spunk. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. And you know what? Uh <laughs> uh, it was smart enough to know what it was trying to be, Max. That's the way I'm going to kind of part ways with you on there. I thought for the most part, I, I kind of liked the script. Yeah. What I did like best about this movie, though, was kind of the, uh, nothing was second guessed. It was kind of just like a letter rip, pull the rip cord, yeah. print it, let's move on to the next one. It there was kind of no creative differences. No, it was just kind of like, uh, it was kind of like the chubby, goofy girl with too much confidence. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like she just doesn't care. <laughs> She's going to have a good time. You can have a good time with her. You can leave the party. I, I chose to stay and act stupid with her. It was a lot of fun. And we'll get into the scenes and dialogue, which I probably laughed at way too much for a 43-year-old man. <laughs> My first John Waters film, Max, mm-hmm. you're going to have to tell me why I – maybe if I had seen more John Waters, I wouldn't have <clears> liked <throat> this as much. But, look, this is just a goofball film. But the satire was actually kind of good. Uh, I, I, it left me with the idea that I'd, I may want to see more John Waters films. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. But there you go. That's what I thought of it. I'm going to go seven with you guys. All right. Look at that. I'm going to go seven. And Max, you you may bring me down because now I'm thinking, well, <laughs> dang, Max usually makes pretty good points. He <laughs> yeah. may bring me down. Maybe if I'd seen another John Waters film, no, I'd be down there with we're you. We're going to bring him up. We're going to bring him up. No, I'm not. You know, Just start right off the bat. I'm not comparing this to as compared to other Waters movies because I've liked some of his other movies way more than I like this. But hey, overall, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just it was sort of forgettable to me. Yeah, well, it had Mike. It had Mike Shannon in it. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, I love that guy. It had Zod. It had Maggie Gyllenhaal <laughs> yeah, in it. Young Maggie Gyllenhaal. Mag Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Here's some goat urine. Would you like some? <laughs> oh, it's the Satanist thing. Oh, it's the Satanist thing in me. Yeah, <laughs> stupid movie. <laughs> Found myself chuckling. It was like Savage <laughs> entered my house. I was compelled by the spirit of Savage. I laughed like that a little bit in this movie. Uh, Let's talk about some scenes. You want to do that right sure, now? Sure, sure. Now, we're talking about John Waters. We're yeah. talking about Cecil B. Demented. Yeah. We have three sevens and a five. Max, I want to go to you first, though. <clears throat> what is it, when you think of this film, what is it that could have been better? What is it you thought worked pretty well? What I liked about the movie was uh, the point of it. What yeah. they were trying to say with the movie, what they were pointing out, which is, I mean, it's glaringly obvious yeah. what they were saying with the movie, that Hollywood has become a machine. Yeah. Pretty girl, pretty guy, yeah. dangerous situation, whatever. There's your movie. You know, insert star of the month here. Yeah. And it's true that, that a lot of the Hollywood product is like that. Yeah. And I've heard you have those exact conversations. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've talked about that. <laughs> Max, I actually thought of you an awful lot. Exactly. I know you, you mentioned that. You thought about me a lot. Yeah. And, uh, so I agree with everything that they said in the movie yep. yeah. or the points they made. The way they did it could have been executed better. I didn't like these people. I didn't like Cecil B. the Minute. I <laughs> would not want to hang out with that guy. I wouldn't hang out with any of the people in the in the sprocket holes. Are you looking for friends when you watch these things? I want to nope. get stupid. But, I, <laughs> but, but hold on. Here's my point. If, if you want to get somebody behind your your ideas in the movie... Then I have to like these people. I have to be like, yes, Max. I like what these guys are doing. He was a terrorist. I don't like these people. I wouldn't <laughs> want to hang out with any one of them. If I, if I met these people and had a one-on-one conversation with one of them, and we started talking about, yeah, Hollywood, it's, it's you know, so blah blah blah, 
And then I got them around all their friends. I was like, you hang around these people? Yeah, but this <laughs> is a comedy. <laughs> this is a slapstick comedy. This isn't a documentary, but man. It's, but it's also trying to make a point. And yes. to get people on it your is. side, you have to make likable characters to get them on your side and to support those people. Oh. I didn't support any of these people. I don't like any of them. I yeah. liked them. I liked Gyllenhaal's Satanist. I liked Fidget. Yeah, I think Max was seeing him as the antagonist, though, okay. instead of the protagonist. Yeah, they sort of were. I was like, these are the bad guys. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I agree with what they're saying. Right. Do I particularly care for the way they went about it? No. Right. Right. But Max, you know, I've been reading. And, yeah, and I do know, and I, real quick, I do realize it's a satire. I know it's over the top. I know it's a John Waters movie. In some of his earlier films, he did that sort of a satirical thing, but. When he did it in some of his earlier films, and especially in Serial Mom, which I love, it was a little bit more restrained. It wasn't so wildcatted and crazy. This was just like <laughs> nuts out there, and it just, mm. I did not resonate with me. It was just too much spastic. I mean, if you're going to go off the wall and crazy like that, the whole thing's got to be that way. You can't yeah. have just one group of people that are off the wall and crazy. And, and it's so, I mean, it's just like, a, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you have not seen Patch Adams, the director's cut. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I okay. will not see Patch Adams. Hey, and, and by, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I found myself going, that's just, it shouldn't be that funny to me, but it is. There's but a you, lot of stuff in here that's funny that I chuckled at, I laughed yeah, at. Right. I did, the whole execution just fell kind of flat for me. You know, a lot of people, I've read up on uh, some people's take on this film, and yeah. they say, well, you know, some people think it's a satire of Hollywood, but it's also a satire of the people who take film way too seriously Absolutely. because mm -hmm. it, it it pokes fun at them too. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely know. making fun of them. So I mean, yeah, he's he's taking these characters to the extreme that if you get one penny of money from a studio, now nah, your film's automatically a piece of garbage. Yeah. Well, that's just ridiculous. Well, speaking of ridiculous and making fun of people, <laughs> let's go right over to the producer real quick. Savage, we'll let you get yeah, the yeah, last word yeah. in this. Producer, same question. I love the wackiness of the film. Mm -hmm. I love the cheap <laughs> special effects. I love just the randomness of the stuff that happens in it. What I did not like about it was Melanie Griffith. I thought she was great. <laughs> I, she was I did not like her. I never liked her to begin with. Yeah. I that? cannot stand watching her in anything. This was her best film by far for me, and I still didn't like her that much in it. You know, she looked older. <laughs> she looked older in this film than film she's making now. I know. It's called plastic it. surgery, by the yeah, way. I guess she it did. is. She, she was showing her age. It's called sure. face peeling or yeah. something. Yeah. You should see her in Roar. This was a this was a Melanie Griffith double feature. For oh, me. that's right. He watched Roar this week. I went to the midnight show of Roar and I couldn't sleep, so I went home and watched this. Oh, <laughs> all right. So you didn't like Mel? You, you liked her here, or did you? Say I you didn't, didn't like her at the beginning. How's okay. that? And it's probably because she was probably made to act that way. Yeah. It just she just it got on my nerves. Adam. As, as uh, Pat Nix never had sex in this room. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Some stroke victims <laughs> have though. <laughs> but I thought the rest of the the cast was really good. I thought everyone did a really good job on it. It just felt like uh, people. I, like, I I would be in this movie. Yeah. Like if I had a budget of whatever X amount, and I had my friends, I would make this movie. Ten million dollars. He had a budget. There's no way he had that much money. Ten million dollars was a budget. Ten, Ten million dollars. That's a big budget for John Waters. Boy, that's a lot of oysters they bought then. Yeah. Because yeah. He's from <laughs> Baltimore. So. Okay. <laughs> but there was a real energy behind this thing. And once again, the thing I think I, I do appreciate is that the satire was very clear. It was very obvious. We're going to make fun of these people, right? and we're just going to have fun. Savage, what do you got? When you think about this film, uh, you know the spiel. What yeah, you got? well, you know, I watched it uh, years ago, and then I saw it come up on Netflix, and I watched it, and then that's why I decided to watch it for the show. You can almost say that it's kind of the idealized autobiography of John Waters. Yeah, he would he would like for that to be his story, mm -hmm. you know. And again, it goes back to somebody called him Cecil B. Demented. So I guess this is kind of the idealized reality, because he really feels this way. If you listen to interviews with Waters, he feels this way about the Hollywood machine and and all these things. So there's that. The best way that I've heard this film described is gleefully amateurish. Yeah, gleefully amateurish. They're they're just having fun doing this, and some of it is very ad libbed. You can feel that. But again, it's it's gleeful in it. There's there's no apologies. There's yeah. it's and it's not even really ironic. I mean, I guess it kind of is, because like you said, your point is where they're pointing the finger back at themselves or mm -hmm. the the uh, the cineasts or whatever cinephiles. Well, you know, the really, really effete ones, you know, the, okay. you know what I'm not talking. the people that just like cinema. No, 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 that no. are very astute into it. Yeah. That. You know, the, the, those people like that. Yeah. And uh, I like Stephen Dorff. I've always been a big Stephen Dorff fan. I don't. He doesn't do more. Work. I don't either. Max, we wouldn't see that. I like movie, that, dude. Motel yeah. Life. Did we not see that? Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. I mean, the guy, the guy can act. Yeah. I would love yeah. to see more of them. Yeah. 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 Um, 
but it's just a fun ride. And and Adam's point where there are some terrible CGI effects. And, and <laughs> There's no CGI <laughs> yeah. in that. Yeah, there is. There are some Photoshop. Oh, yeah. There, some terrible, terrible Photoshop. Well, we only had $10 million. <laughs> yeah. And half of that was on oysters. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, well, they set her and hair on fire. painting the van over and over and over yeah. and again. And the hair the hair's getting set on fire. That wasn't CGI. Yeah, oh, but it's... Yeah. Um, the, it's just fun, you yeah. know, and mm-hmm. and I think it, that gleefully amateurish, I think that sums it up the best because there's just this devil may care attitude. And that's what it, John Waters brings to his films is mm-hmm. this this disregard yeah. for convention. Mm-hmm. And and maybe that's the, the point of this is to disregard convention. Um, but that's, I can, that's, I, that's always been John. Waters yeah, thing. I yeah. mean, he's I mean, he's built his whole career on just yeah. saying, all right, we're going to film this. And people just go, whoa, what what is this? And that's, you know, it just <laughs> pops up on these midnight circuits yeah. and stuff. And yeah. it just goes berserk. Can I ask that's you where a guy got his reputation. I'm going to ask you one quick question. No, you cannot ask me. Well, I'm going to ask you anyways. OK, there's a lot of people out there making films on smaller budget, goofball films, satire films. But why is he somehow relevant? He has a relevant following. People appreciate his work. He seems to rise above his peers a bit what makes him special inside the realm of satirists and you know us uh, uh, tour filmmakers and stuff like that as far as indie he, yeah. he was the guy that sort of as far as i know he was really the one that really got the ball rolling on a lot of this stuff i mean he just if you've had if you read the about the making of uh, you know uh, pink flamingos or, yeah. or man trouble or any uh, not man trouble uh female trouble was right. i can't remember the name of the movie right now I mean, just to read how he went through the making of those movies is just like, this guy's insane. You you did that to make yeah. a movie? That's crazy. He's ridiculously ambitious. And he would go out. I mean, he literally would get in his car and drive to a theater and say, "Hey, you guys want to show this?" And eventually, some of them started showing it, and like two or three people would see it and say, "Hey, you got to come see this thing. You got to yeah. come see this yeah. thing." And it just uh, he he built up his reputation as that uh, as this just Gonzo filmmaker. Well, it was more than that, though. He was uh, he took advantage of the onset of the midnight movie. Uh, Jodorowsky did it at the same time. They were coming around. But well, Jodorowsky time. sort of started the midnight movie. He kind of did where with El Topo started. and stuff like that. Yeah, with but, El Topo and stuff. But John Waters came along right at that same time when <clears throat> when the midnight movie was still a real thing. Yeah, but I, I think I think I think the difference is here that uh, the midnight movie is still a, a real thing. I, as evidenced by my attendance at Roar <laughs> the other night. <laughs> um, see Roar midnight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Waters came along when when the midnight movie st- sort of thing was taken off, but he came in with something that was like, "This is just the strangest thing I've ever right. seen." But he it's came not up mainstream. with something. It wasn't mainstream. He's never made what exactly. you call mainstream film. Well, cry baby. Even those are not really main. I mean, the, here the guy's got enough clout to get Johnny Depp to be in a movie that yeah. nobody's gonna go see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got a, he's got the look look who he got in this yeah, movie. Melanie Griffith yeah. it just seems like okay well, what I, don't, do we, I don't know so much Melanie Griffith she's sort of a fading uh, well, star it's but she, but she got Gyllenhaal yeah Dorf she even. was coming up yeah. Dorf was coming up Michael Shannon Mike Shannon Mike Shannon yeah <laughs> she got all those guys in there I mean these people want to work with this guy but look Melanie Griffith was an Academy Award nominated actress yeah, at this time absolutely but you know Max I was reading a lot about John Waters they say this guy you just have to meet him they say there's something about his personality and his mm-hmm. conversation. People like him. Yeah. He's they incredibly say, charismatic. They say he's incredibly nice and charismatic, and he, he does not live with his nose in the air at all. People mm-hmm. like this guy. <laughs> no, he does not. So apparently he has. No. <laughs> Can we stop there? Okay. Uh, but anyways, yeah, maybe he gives you a magical personality, but, yeah, he's been able to uh, keep afloat with uh, the ability to get people to go along with his project. This movie... I, it could only come from John Waters. Yeah. Because He's he the, is Cecil B. Dominic. Yeah, he is that guy. You know what we need yeah. to do? Why don't we stop right here, guys? Let's take a quick break, listen to a piece of the film, Cecil B. Demented, the year 2000, from which it was released. We're going to come back, talk a bit more, uh, possibly about John Waters, but I want to get into some more of the scenes. All right. Let's talk about just some things we remember, because it's a shotgun blast of just that. Um, here you go. Here's a piece <laughs> of Cecil B. Demented. We'll be back in just a second. Cecil, please don't make me do this thing. Look, your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. Except this. Pictures up! Pam! Right here! Roll camera! Camera rolling! Speed! Market! Action! Sabotage the cinema! Take back the screen! 
vandalize the movies, bring back the dream. This is so stupid. Sailor lines the way they're written. Okay. Demented forever. <laughs> there you go. Cecil B. Demented, the film we're talking about tonight. There's a piece of it right there. Let's talk about some scenes, guys. Was that the spirit of five-year-old Leonard Nimoy with that kid in the wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a juvenile Leonard Nimoy. Right, right. He looked like more like Mo from Three Stooges. <laughs> well, I mean, that <laughs> scene. Like William, remember we- William? Yeah. Will- William's a little grumpy today. Watch it, you little prick. Yeah. But Makes he's you- alive. Yeah, he's alive. <laughs> I think of that when I think of this film. That's one scene that kind of pops up into my head. That kid looked just like a shrunked up Leonard Nimoy. Like <laughs> shrunked up. <laughs> that dude was shrunked up. <laughs> dude was shrunked up. Uh, yeah, there's a conversation starter for you. What did you think of that scene, Max? Uh, the scene I just brought up. Uh, the whole ballroom scene with yeah. the little Kidnapping. shrunked up little Nimoy. Yeah, yeah. little Nimoy. <laughs> little Nimoy. <laughs> I, 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 the the little kid in the wheelchair. Yeah, I like that. I like that they're making fun of that sort of thing because it is. Just oh poor little William, we just love him. No, you don't. You troll. You're rolling this kid out of here. In <laughs> he's giving you the finger up on stage. You know, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> that's what you're rolling him out there for to bring some bucks in. You don't yep. love this kid. You yeah, couldn't yeah. give two <laughs> craps if he dies tomorrow. Yep. So that aspect I loved. I was like, yeah, finally somebody takes a shot at that. Mm-hmm. The rest of it, mm. <laughs> I kept thinking to myself, if, you, if I'll bet you if you pan the camera over Savage and looked at. Uh, Waters and the guys off to the side. I bet you they're just rolling on the floor <laughs> laughing because that kid was a goof, man. He was good. He was pretty good, though. And then, uh, well, you know, the woman tried to kill him. She turned up his oxygen. He couldn't yeah, breathe. Turned off. Yeah. And that was when the sprocket holes yeah, came attacked. in and attacked and took over yeah. the movie theater. Yeah, they'd uh, set up the whole thing, you know. Yeah. It, was a, it was a plan. It was a jack. What's your scene, Sam? Oh, there's, Talk about there's something. So, there's so many. Um, the, you could do the the Forrest Gump two, with Kevin <laughs> Nealon. What was it Gumpier? <laughs> More Gump. <laughs> or you could do the 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 Kung Fu Saviors or the the Porn Saviors, where you're fight, fight, I, fighting off people. I with didn't directions. like that scene. I didn't like that scene very much. <laughs> the Kung, like that one? The yeah. Kung Fu or the the Kung Fu scene. It just it, it didn't it didn't work. Anyways, what else you got? <laughs> it just didn't work for me. Or Michael Shannon asking uh, Melanie Griffith if she knew Mel Gibson. <laughs> That was fantastic. I like that part. I was, he was the. I, I liked. I really liked him in this movie. He was like great. Shannon. Yeah. He. I, in fact, of all the people in the movie, he's the only one I was like, I could maybe hang out with that dude. But Savage is right though. We sure want to know how big Mel Gibson's junk was, <laughs> right. and who doesn't. Uh, I don't know. Adam has pictures. I'm sure. Adam, what do you, what do you have? What do you have when you think about this film? When you think of a particular scene that you say rises to well, the top, what you got? Well, that's kind of close to what I was going to say. Um, all the the over exaggerated horniness of everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. Just constantly grinding on each other, like. Uh, uh. Yeah. It was just like, what the heck? <laughs> and it's just constantly going throughout the whole film. And then uh, there was some raunch in this film because when they finally well, when they finally get it on at the end, he lets them have sex. Mm. That's not the way it sounds. It doesn't sound squishy like that. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, I was like, what yeah. is that? Yeah. But that's actually know. kind of low raunch for John Waters, though. It is. You would call this low raunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared to some of the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty low. It's down there. But uh, no, I really liked uh I liked the I liked the gump thing, you know. And and it was surprising good when they when the sprocket hole started to get shot. It's like, "Oh, whoa." I mean, it's they didn't pull any punches with that. You know, it took yeah. me by surprise. It, was, yeah. it it wasn't it almost wasn't funny. It kind of took you the, out of the comedy of it. You know, it's yeah. just like, holy god, he just. Well, that's another thing he likes to do. It's like that shock cinema. Yeah, well, that's his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it worked. You know what else was uh, <laughs> heavy in this film was this, the music was real up front. It, it was. had that kind of. Uh, Oh, I had like like in the opening credits, you had this. I yeah. hated it. You had this classic Hollywood feel with the marquees. Oh yeah, and then you had this kind of. Uh, I don't know what kind of music it was. It was, it was just a like beat studio. almost. It was like a beat, kind but of a screechy hip hop kind of thing. Yeah, but it yeah. swelled in with the, the the symphony. It's like the classic Hollywood thing. Not who, who's the guy who did the Star Wars? The John Williams. Williams. Yeah, John Williams. There's a lot of that in the credits. I mean, I picked up on the same thing. It's like I think it was trying to show the dichotomy of the the indie hip hop trying yeah. to overcome the classic that's sound. Ex- that's exactly what I got from it. Yeah, I didn't know which way it was going to tilt me. Right, classic or. Or we're going after classic. Right. I didn't know which way it was going to go. I wrote that down. I hated the music at the beginning. <laughs> Pick one or the other. Right. Not both, because it didn't work. I did like the opening credits, though, where they were showing all the yeah. historical theaters and the marquees yeah. were changing. And the stuff on the marquees was pretty funny. It was. Yeah. The best one, I wrote it down, was uh, 
Les Enfants du Paradise. Finally in English. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's great. I love that. Yeah, I remember that too. Or the Star Trek, Star Wars, and every Cineplex. Yeah, it was yeah every other one everything. is Star Wars or Star uh, Trek. Uh, yeah. Four Poly, Poly Shore. Oh, the Poly Shore Marathon at the UA <laughs> Cinemas. Yep. The, yeah. Oh, the hundredth anniversary call for reservations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So he he was pretty clear on what it was he wanted us to remember, think about, or yeah. definitely that he was. Uh, let's talk about Melanie Griffith though. I liked her when they introduced her, and she was just this absolute bitch. Yeah, Ricky Honey Lakes, Whitlock. Yeah. Honey Whitlock. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Ricky Lakes following her around like a puppy dog, and she's just messing with her. I want you to go on the phone right now and find out. I need to know right now. Did Pat Nixon have sex in my hotel room? You want me to ask that? Yeah. yeah. And she does it. Yeah. So you just you get a sense that this woman just has power. She thinks yeah. she does. And the white limo. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of wanted to see her be brought down. Sure. Right. Her character was drawn that way. All sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> she but was I, a diva. She was a she diva. Was. Yeah. yeah. Prototype Hollywood diva. I liked that. I liked it when they brought her back to her lair and then they started uh, giving her those terrorizing uh, uh, makeup. <laughs> <laughs> makeup, yeah. uh, makeup. What you, makeup and hair and, and all costume, that. Yeah, yeah. Dyed Good her stuff. hair. It burns. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a root. <laughs> it Don't burns. be ashamed of your heterosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> I like when they introduced her at the uh, at the award ceremony or the what, the, the premiere of the movie, and they say. Uh, <laughs> Oscar nominated for her role in Forced Entry. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> Do you know what Forced Entry is? I well, not from personal experience. It's man. The, it's this, it's a notorious, notorious 1973 movie starring Harry Reams. Well, you know, Max, if if you're telling me to watch a movie called Forced Entry with Harry Reams, yeah, I think and I'm no going to stay away. That just sounds dirty. <laughs> it, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the point. It's one of these, and that's the kind of stuff Waters, he loves that kind of stuff. I love that kind of stuff, too. It's like, wow, yeah. i got to get my hands on this. I want to see what the big deal with this movie is. There's tons of jokes in this movie. Yeah. And that, some of it goes over my head, to be honest that with you. most people probably that. did not pick up on. Savage. Yeah. Uh, a bit more. Let's talk a little bit more about the performances or possibly maybe a scene that jumps out at you. Um, oh, here's a scene. Uh, back me up on this one. All what right. did you think of the mall theater takeover i thought that was pretty funny like three dollars for twizzlers this is a medium (laughs) patch adams you're dead (laughs) right shooting the popcorn thing yeah yeah but let's get to the sprocket holes i want your take on the sprocket holes yeah this this band when they went out and they created the terror cinema terror because that's what they were yeah what did you think of how all those scenes played out i think it was good i thought it was good i mean but uh again they were following the charismatic cult leader that was cecil b demented and i think stephen dorff's performance in this to me, is what rises to the top. And I've always been a fan of Dorf. Dorf um, and I, I really think he just nailed it, hit that intensity that he brings to, to what he does. Yeah. Um, you know, the sprocket holes, I, I liked how they kind of correlated to the directors that they had um, mm-hmm. tattooed on them, our top threes. And they all played their part. I mean, you have to have a costumer, you have to have a makeup person, you have to have a producer, you have to have, you know, whatever, a driver, I guess, Mr. Shannon. Yeah. See, I told you you have to have me around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you, again, it's the, the ad lib sometimes kind of drew me off. And I thought that the, the mall takeover scene was probably one of the most glaring ad libs yeah. in, in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with Alicia Witt. Uh, uh, Cherish. Ch- Cherish, yeah. It's just... It just it kind of rang hollow a little bit with her really? her kind of rant. It just it just rang hollow for me that particular scene. I liked her and everything else in the thing, but that particular scene I really can't back you up on because I thought that was one of the weakest scenes. Yeah, uh, I like their layer, the the old hippodrome that was a pimped out layer, Max. Oh, the man. hippodrome, yeah. The hippodrome, yeah. yeah. That's what it was. And I got I got a whiff of uh, when they did that pullback master shot of the whole thing where they're all waking up, where he's like, "Wake up, sprocket holes." It reminded me of. Um, the Bill Murray thing in the ocean, the Sisu. Steve Zizu? Steve Zizu. Yeah, where you yeah. could see the whole ship, yeah. like from half cut. And mm-hmm. that, I, I really thought about that right there. Where they're Reminded all me up. of Hollywood Squares. There was a little <laughs> a of that. Yeah, yeah. There was a little <laughs> of that. <laughs> 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 that's so, $100,000 so, payment. <laughs> <laughs> they both suck, Max. It's okay. So, I mean, there was some definitely, there was some craft work that went into this. Uh, but again, I go back to what I said at the, the initial is like, I kind of am charmed by the gleeful amateurish. You keep saying the word gleeful. I think that's a good word. It is. That's a good word for this film. Uh, that's what John Waters brings to his films, I think. It's, there is a gleefulness to his, <laughs> to, to his, his productions. But uh, I, I, got, I keep going back to the Kevin Nealon Gump thing because I think it was funny when uh, she's like, my name's Forrest Gump. <clears throat> she goes, 
that's a damn shame. <laughs> yeah, that's a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just so <laughs> dumb. Oh, so dumb. I like how, uh, you know, it shows the absurdity of how obsessed we were with that phrase when the movie came out, Life is Like a Box of Chocolates. Right. Well, no, life is like crab cake. Crab cake this time. <laughs> Covered in crap, but it's okay in the middle right. or whatever. And that may be a good analogy to this film. <laughs> yeah, it's covered in crap, but in the middle there's something glowing there. Right, right. Uh, Looks tasty. You know, I, I want to say I want to say one quick thing about yeah. the, the theater scene. Yeah. What struck me, I remember going to the movies in the mid late '80s, and this is when the big multiplexes were popping up. You right. know, I remember the big one in Baton Rouge was Cinema Twelve or Cinema right. Eight. It was like, right. wow, there's. 12 movies playing at one place. This is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm so going to stay here all day. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay here. Wow, I can see all of them. Right. And then you walk into the theater and you're like, wow. And I grew up in, in, a, in a town that had one screen theater yeah. built yeah. in like 1922. And so yeah. it was huge. It had a balcony and everything. Yeah. And you walk into this little this, this multiplex in Baton Rouge and you walk in and it's like, I could literally hollow out my house and put a screen at the end of it. And this would be <laughs> right. the size of this theater. It's so the yeah. screen is so tiny, yeah. and yeah. there's like three rows of seats. It's like sitting on an airplane watching a movie. And if you notice, when they went into the theater, there were literally like five rows of seats in the <laughs> yeah. theater, and the screen yeah. was like the size of a TV up on the wall. And yeah. that's what struck I said, yes, that's, that's the stuff that I like. That's, that's what I find funny, yeah. that real subtle jab at what they're doing. They're crying. They're saying, yeah, you need the big screen experience. And they're making the screen so tiny. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they're putting like 15 people in that's here. Funny. It's like He makes a good point. That's no, exactly yeah, what that's, happens. That's the point that the movie was trying yeah, to make. Good stuff. <laughs> and you know, inside the theaters, too, when they went in, they, I think there's two scenes inside these theaters. Mm -hmm. talking about. One's the kung fu scene, which yeah. I say, do I say I didn't like that? It just felt like you have an opportunity to be funny, because there's funny parts in this movie. And just seeing the patrons act like zombies going after them wasn't funny enough for me. Right. And then you have the other scene, which... I don't know. It really wasn't that funny, but at least there's something written in there, and that's the uh, the porno theater, right? In Cherish, she gives this big uh, spiel and uh, discussion right. about save me. Yeah, her well, her old porn days, and yeah. how she became a porn star, and they do that. And then they walk into the theater, and you know, there's her movie. <laughs> it wasn't as funny as I think they thought it would be. Uh, no, you know, I don't think a lot of the stuff in here was as funny as they thought it would. I think I think some, like I said, the thing with the, the tiny screen and the yeah. you know, ten people yeah. in the theater—that's the kind of stuff that's funny. That's where you really are taking a a solid jab at what right. what is going on with the modern Hollywood machine. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that works and makes a point. When you're just glaringly, obviously screaming it out from the top of, from the rooftop, no pun intended. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not really a joke if it's so obvious and you're explaining yeah. the whole thing to me. Then it's not funny anymore. Well, what do you think of the ending? Let's wrap this up and yeah. talk about the ending of this film. He had a vision. Uh, did you like the way it wrapped up, Savage? Did you like the way this thing came to a boil, came to a head, uh, rounded itself out? Yeah. Well, I liked that it ended out at a drive-in. Yeah. Uh, because, had to. Yeah. yeah. Again, I think that goes back to Max's point where he's he's kind of pointing out the things. And we all, I don't know if we all, but I know I have hid other people in a vehicle and snuck them into drive-ins. I've been in the trunk of a car, Savage. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I grew up with a, uh, they call the Miracle Twin Drive-In yeah. in Burton, Michigan. And, uh, yeah, I, it was always fun to sneak Michael into the drive-in. <laughs> drive I've been underneath blankets in several trunks. Right, yeah, right, right. Done it. Uh, I, I don't know that I understand it. You, you know the ending where I burn for cinema or uh, I don't. I know, I guess, uh, the ultimate sacrifice for celluloid or... Did you like her turn? Max, maybe you can ask this question, too. Did you like her turn when, when Griffith went from the, the the diva that needed to be brought back down to earth to a champion of the uh, sprocket hole? She became one of them. And at the end, she sets her hair on fire. And I guess what you're saying, yeah. she burns for cinema or whatever. Yeah. Did you like the way that whole thing, uh, did it feel like a good climax to you? After everything that happened... And you just kind of like, ugh, you roll your eyes so much at some of the stuff that goes on in the movie. And then when that happens, you're like, ugh, gee, what a shock. You well, know, it yeah. just said, eh, I but saw it coming. It's the final irony, though, is the thing, is that she became beloved again, and that's what she wanted. She, yeah. So she's another kind of diva. It's Yeah. It's she started turning once the good press started happening, like the, I, good, the yeah. good reviews and her eyes kind of perked up. It's like, oh, they're interested in me again. Yeah. So the, the actual thing that they were railing against is the exact pattern that she ended up going back down. Uh, you know, and I like things that are bookend where it's obvious. Here's your beginning and here's your end. They're similar, but they're different. Mm -hmm. This film has that because when you first see her, she's walking through the hallway at the hotel. You know, Miss Miss Honey Whitlock, this is going to get your autograph and all this, and it's the fans and it's the reporters. 
at the end, she's walking her way to the paddy wagon, right? And all the police are there, getting ready to arrest her, getting her autograph. Right, right. I mean, she's the same person, but I think she gets it now. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what that's. She had her Norma Desmond moment. She had a Norma Desmond coming to Jesus moment, or whatever. She was ready for her close up. Yeah, you know, what we need to do. We need to get ready for our top threes, guys. You want to do that? <laughs> you want to yeah, wrap? Yeah. We want to wrap this up and get into our top threes. Sure. Guys? You think it's time for that? I think it is. I think it's time I have to... a vision. Yeah. Of top threes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about our top three directors that we get tattooed on our body and Max Damn it. I want to tell you, I want you to tell me where. You can't just say blah, blah. I on my know. bells. <laughs> <laughs> really? that, that would be two of them right there. <laughs> oh, you know what you could do? You get the Wachowski brothers to get one on each bell. <laughs> hey, if that's one of your picks, <laughs> you do that. I'm going to change my list now. <laughs> it's the siblings. <laughs> Producer saying roll along. Let's do that, guys. Let's listen to one last piece of Cecil B. Demented. Year 2000. Come on back. We're going to talk about our top three, which was inspired by this one. Directors we'd have tattooed on our bodies. Here you go. I've had a final vision. Would you set your hair on fire for our movie? Your fans. They love the new honey. They love her so much. And for me, Cecil B. Demented. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Demented. Cecil B. Demented. There you go. John Waters' film, written and directed. We just talked about it. Inspired a top three list, as they all do. Top three directors, Max. Gumbo. Top three directors. Gumbo, who we'd have tattooed on our body. Right. Who we'd consider tattoo worthy. That's permanent body. Yeah. But let's get into this, guys. Let's all talk right. about this all now. Right. Savage, yeah. you are responsible for this bastard of a sure. movie. You tell me. Top three directors we would get tattooed on our body. I want to hear about the body parts, even even if it's your buttocks. All right. Well, I'm going to go the kind of Soviet Russian star. I'll get one on each shoulder and then, you know, the main one across my back. Kind okay. Of thing. Uh, you know, I'm a visual guy. My new favorite number three visual guy, uh, Nicholas Reffin. I knew it. Oh, yeah. I like that dude. Yeah. And where's it going? Right shoulder. Right shoulder, baby. S- Soviet style. Real quickly, favorite Nic- uh, Nicholas Reffin film? Tough, tough, tough. When you uh, think of him, what do you what do you think of first? Uh, Valhalla Rising, or Only God Forgives. Drives, awesome. Um, he named three. I asked him for one. He gave me a triplet. Oh, that's. He's only made four that I can think of. <laughs> no, he's made more than that. Um, well, I mean, big mainstream sort of stuff. <laughs> right. What about you, uh, Gumbo? Really what about you, Gumbo? What's your number three here? You know the theme. Really? Akira Kurosawa, one of the greatest filmmakers ever. You have fun with that tattoo. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you have fun not watching some of the greatest movies ever made. Where are you going to get this greatest? Just because you're a racist. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a sexist. Because you don't like Japanese people. Didn't we establish this last week I'm a racist and yeah, a sexist? Yeah, I think we all are. <laughs> Max, where uh, yeah, are you going to get this tattoo at? I don't know, my shoulder. Your shoulder? Yeah. Okay. Not yeah, just on just my right forehead. there, tough man on your it, arm. It's going to be in Japanese script? No, it's going to say Akira Kurosawa, <laughs> so people will be like, Oh, yeah. Awesome, dude. Kurosawa rules. I'm That's like, a yeah. stupid answer. You're going to have to get that. No, what I'm saying is you have to get that in Japanese text, man. You can't Why? Just get... Then nobody will understand what it says. it's badass, dude. Come on. <laughs> then why don't you get oh, yours in Japanese, I even if one. it's not a Japanese dude? I have one coming. Hang uh-oh, tight. Uh-oh. Adam, what's your number three? What you got? I'd have George Romero right across my stomach like Thug Life. <laughs> I can't like believe Tupac's that's your number three. Life. <laughs> he said like Thug Life. <laughs> Right. I have little zombie hands coming up trying to grab Oh, it. so you'd have some art going on with I it. I would. Yeah. I like that answer. What's your favorite George Romero film? Night Living Dead. Hey, Max, I forgot to uh, ask you. What's or your it favorite? could be Day of the Dead, or it could be Dawn of the Dead. I think you're dead. Adam, what's, <laughs> producer, what's your, number, what's your favorite Kurosawa film, by the way? Me? Yeah. You mean Max? Yojimbo, Sanjiro, Seven Samurai, Throne of Blood. I, man, I could okay. go on and on and on. I'm going to go on and on on my number three. Uh, what's it going to be? I'm going to go straight up uh, Jeff Nichols. All right. Why? Because he made Take Shelter. This is the guy that made and wrote. <laughs> Starring Mike Take Shannon? Michael at that, that point. <laughs> this guy made and wrote Take Shelter. Right. He's getting a tattoo for me on my right <laughs> shoulder. A little tornado? <laughs> no, yeah, with a little tornado on my right shoulder, <laughs> right here, kind of halfway down the arm. And right. there's going to be a tornado going all the way around yeah. down into my wrist, a full like sleeve. All right, I'll we'll get you. There you go. That's it. Out, right? I still have not seen that. I want to see it. But I, I like Jeff it. Nichols. That's a, That guy makes some good stuff. Take Shelter was mind-blowing. Yeah. Savage, you blow my mind. Let's talk yeah. about directors inspired by Cecil B. Demented. Yeah, you know, I'm a visual guy. And number two and number one are kind of interchangeable. He's a visual times. guy. Um, yeah, so are movies. Yeah, Ridley Scott. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Ridley Scott, left shoulder, Soviet style, Reffin and Scott. I like that. You're going to get these. <laughs> You're probably going to come in next week with these. All right, Ridley Scott, favorite yeah. movie? Blade Runner. Without a doubt. Yeah. Man, you love that film. Everybody loves that film. Yay, That's a Blade Runner. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Gladiator's pretty good, too. 
If you don't like aliens? Blade Runner, you're no friend of mine. Aliens? Come on now. <laughs> uh, Alien. Alien. Max, I'm dying over here. Number two, what is it? Spielberg. Steven. The Beard. Spielberg. <laughs> it's got to be. I, if somebody's got to say Spielberg. Yeah, I'm, I'm going out there. I'm out there. I said it. I did it. If they made a director Hall of Fame, he'd have his own wing. Yeah, he would. I mean, the dude totally... If I hate to go back to this, if you grew up in the seventies or eighties, that guy shaped your childhood, man. Yeah, right. Formed it. There's going to come a day when he's going to pass away, and they're going to look back at his career, and people are going to go, "My God, was he really that prevalent? Was he really that good? Yeah, was yeah. he really that respected and renowned? My you God, can, look what he did! You can do that now while he's yeah. still alive, but you can leave off War Horse. That's fine. He, he made hadn't always. seen War Horse. <laughs> he made always. He, he didn't make hook. always. Yeah. He made Hook. I liked Always <laughs> because uh, you know Richard Dreyfuss and John Goodman. Yeah. He yeah, also that's made. Jaws and Schindler's List was worth it. Yeah. yeah, all that needs to be <laughs> mentioned is Jaws. I'm with Max. All the good movies the guys made. I mean, he made Raiders and the e. Indiana e. Jones movies, E.T., Close Encounters, Duel. Love Duel. <laughs> but Max is right. He made Jaws. He but made he made Jaws. Jaws. He was the Wonderkind of the '70s. There you go. Adam, flap your jaws. Tell me uh, number two for you. We're talking about uh, directors you'd have tattooed on you. What is it? I would have to go Jim Henson. Oh, yep, that's look a good at him. And you know where I'd Jim put Henson. it. On your buttocks. Right over my heart. Oh, oh my God. That's not bad. Would you have like a little favorite little Muppet above it? Like a little uh, clip probably art? Probably Gonzo, yeah. You think so? I, I knew a dude Gonzo. back in Louisiana. He had all the Muppets tattooed up and down one arm. It was Shut awesome. Up, really? It was crazy awesome. <laughs> I was like, man, I love the Muppets. He said, check it out. <laughs> like, honestly, that's crazy. He had Animal on there? He had all of them. <laughs> all of them. All the, the main ones. Yeah. The yeah. main Muppet group, all of them, up and down his arm. Forget about Jim Henson movies. What's your favorite Muppet? You say Gonzo. Well, is yeah, saying? Gonzo is probably my favorite. But I, I mean, yeah. I love them all for different reasons. Okay. Well, we love you for no reason. What's your favorite? One, what's your favorite joking, of love. the movies, though? Uh, probably the original, the first one. You I mean, think so? Just, the Muppet movie. So close to my heart. Yeah, I love, that, I love close that movie. to his heart. See how he played that. I love that movie. Why is it next to his heart? Because it's close to his heart. I Aww. love it. Exactly. Uh, I cried when Jim Henson died. Literally cried. Number yeah. two for you. Oh, number two for me. I'm gonna go Cronenberg. Cronenberg. On the other Ooh, arm. Let me tell you why. One. Because, well, this guy has such vision with his film. I mean, he's like, I, this scene's going to look like this. And if that, if I want that person's face to look weird in this shot, <laughs> I ain't stopping until it looks as weird as it is in my head right now. Right. He's a hardworking director with I'm a vision. I'm surprised you picked that. Why? You just don't seem like a Cronenberg guy. You're not a horror guy, really. I wouldn't call him a horror filmmaker. Oh, what are you talking yes. about? <laughs> That's where he made his bones, man. Well, listen, uh, when you say horror, I don't mean slash. Well, look, he's also made Eastern Promises. Um, yeah. I know. History I know. of Violence. Um, yeah, obviously horror with the fly and things. But I still don't see him as just he's a horror guy. More suspense. Suspense, yeah. But look. Tense. Well, I, don't, I love Cronenberg. Well, I love okay. Cronenberg. I don't understand why that's a shock to you. He's one of my favorite directors. Cronenberg. What are you about? Nichols and Cronenberg. I don't know. I mean, did you see The Brood and Videodrome? Yeah, well, I haven't seen. I don't know if I've seen Rabbit Videodrome. and. Well, all I've that never stuff. seen. I've seen Videodrome. I love Videodrome. Uh, Long live the new flesh. Yeah, well, I didn't like his kids' movie too much. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, oh I, thought, I thought we all liked that. Eastern Provinces was so Eastern Provinces, Provinces was great. History of Violence. Come History on, of Violence was fantastic. Was Come on now. Uh, Existence was so good. Oh, oh see how he grits his teeth like <laughs> that. That was a joke. Yeah. Savage, you whipped the number ones? Number one. Roll with it. You know the routine, too. Yeah. We're talking about uh, directors tattooed on your yeah. uh, on your yeah. bum. You know I'm a visual guy, Terry Gilliam. How do you put that above uh, it's really your Scott, other two answers? I don't know. Because, he's, because he creates worlds every time. Yeah. Every single time. He, he's not interested in what this world looks like. He creates his own worlds. And Where would you get this tattoo in? It, it's my Soviet style. It'd be on my back. Oh, see, man, I like what he's doing there. Yeah. I'm not hating Gilliam. I like Gilliam's, some of his movies. Some of them. Eh, eh. Visual, though. Uh, I mean, it, it, they're a visual feast. Yeah. You know, it's hard to leave Tim Burton off because, you know, he creates his own worlds, too. Uh, uh, but right now, Reffin's, <laughs> Reffin's got his spot. So I'm, I'm, waiting, for I that, like it, I'm waiting for that Burton comeback. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. You see what he said? He says, uh, I'm a visual guy. And all of his uh, tattoos tie right into that. Yeah. It's a theme. Yeah. It's a savage mm -hmm. theme. Yeah. Uh, who are we going to? Max, number one. I'm dying. I got to know what. Joel and Ethan Cohen. The Fantastic. Cohen brothers. Across my fingers like uh, Joel. Robert Joel Mitchum. And Ethan. Joel, <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> or it could be like a Radio Rahim in right. uh, Do the Right Thing. I got love and I got hate. Coming at you on the knuckles. No, man. it'd be more like Robert Mitchum in Night of the Hunter because that's where they stole that from. <laughs> <laughs> love, hate. Robert Mitchum. He was the coolest. Yeah, the Cohen brothers. Name a, really, name a bad movie they've made. A I really bad. The only movie Coen Brothers film I have not seen is Barton Fink. I, I have not seen, seen Barton Fink. Wow, you've not seen Barton Fink? Oh, I haven't seen Lady Killers either. Okay, Criminally that's, underappreciated. that's their else. worst movie. What? Lady Killers is the worst movie they've made. And it's good. 
Wait a minute. I don't think any of us have seen, uh, what's the uh, George Clooney? Uh, oh, what's the Cor- Yeah, Cor- yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've never seen that. That's the second worst movie they okay. made. Okay. <laughs> you get the point. Uh, who's, is it Adam number one? Okay, what you got, bud? I would take my right arm and have a tattoo of a chainsaw. And put Sam Raimi right there in there that blade. Go. That's there a good answer. Go. That is a good answer. Max, that's a good answer. That's not a bad answer. It's a great answer. It's my favorite movie of all time, Evil okay. Dead. I was going to ask, what's your favorite movie by Sam Raimi? Of course, that's it. Hey, I'm not ashamed to say I'll put uh, Drag Me to Hell right up there with it. I love Drag, <laughs> I love me, to Drag me to Hell. Yeah. Good People answer. People poo-poo that movie all day. Screw you. Which that leads, a good movie. Which leads me to my number one. I like one. that movie. Which I leads me to movie. my number one answer. You want to know what it is? Malik. No, no, no. I'm going to leave him off. Okay. I'm going to get. <laughs> good move. John Holmes. Takashi Miike, no. tattooed on the inside of my butt cheek so I can crap on it every <laughs> single day. You've seen one of the guy's movies. <laughs> you see, it's, it's purposeful. <laughs> yeah. So I can do things to it every single day. You've seen one movie that dude's made. Oh, I've seen that uh, 48 Ninjas or whatever it's called. 13 Assassins. 13 Assassins. Oh, 13 Assassins, Which yeah. Which a pretty good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Anyways, you've seen that's, two movies the guys That's made. my number one. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know what? You guys, we're all making fun of, ah, oh, we would never do that. I'm doing this. Okay. I want visual proof. <laughs> <laughs> maybe get one of those, like, uh, maybe just with a Sharpie right. for whatever. like a week. Okay, well, then never mind. I don't oh, want visual mind. proof. <laughs> All right, put this out on Twitter. Same question. Right. Uh, you know what uh, Cambridge Girl, check this out. This is what came back. Uh-oh. Cambridge Girl, at Cambridge Girl said, well, she says, at Jeremy Drysdale, and she puts, me arse. <laughs> <laughs> me arse. First of all, I, I didn't know what I was reading there for a minute. Uh, Jeremy Drysdale, I'll look into this, don't know who this is, right. and me arse. Good choice. I, That's yeah, where I you think put it, Mickey. Yeah, right on there. Your arse. Yeah, okay, I understand that here. We have uh, <laughs> Kevin Dillon says, what, I'd never do anything that dumb. Then then he says, wait a minute, George Lucas, on my back, plenty of room to add on extra parts, <laughs> just as he did with special editions. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> so we had a couple people come back. Uh, there you go. All right, guys, let's move along. Next week's show, next week's reveal. I think we're doing something special, right? We're going to do a round of something yeah. slightly unique, slightly special. Ooh, Matt. round of shots. No, we're not special. doing a round of shots. We're going to do a round of top tens. <laughs> not top tens. Wait, I mean a round of tens. What right. am I saying? <laughs> what I'm saying is that I'm going to lead this one off. Okay. We're going to do a round, a round. All four of us are going to pick a ten, right. we, which we deem as a ten right. on Netflix. We're going to drag them in here to the queue. Right. We're going to talk about them, see how many other tens we can get out so of them. So the person who thinks it's a ten, the other of us cannot. You don't have to. No. All right. Okay. I'm just yeah, maybe, to be clear. maybe maybe you give it an eight. Okay. Maybe yeah. you just maybe you just can't get there. Maybe you think we're crazy and go that crap's a two. Right. No. Okay. Just, we just uh, we don't all have to think it's a ten. No. No. But we're yeah. gonna put a spin on it. <clears throat> gotcha. And we've talked about doing this before. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Next week I'm gonna lead this thing off. Right. And uh, you're bringing a ten. I'm bringing a ten into the into the queue. And all right. I, it's it's a ten to me. Okay. It's a ten to a lot of people, all but right. to me for special reasons, and I'll tell you why. We hadn't talked about. As we just did right here, a, 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 a David Cronenberg film. I love that guy. Yeah, <laughs> and we haven't talked much about Walken, and we have not talked much about a Stephen King adaptation. I don't think we've done any. King I know of this no. one. I'm talking about Dead Zone, 1983. Okay. The, the Dead Zone. The Dead Zone, 1983. Not that crap they put on TV with uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, hey, don't knock that. That was, that was not a bad show. Yeah, but, you know, I have kind of like lore for this particular story. I so. hear you. Dead Zone, 1983. That's next <clears throat> week. Uh, that's going to be my 10. Just yeah. drag it on in here. Right. Let's do it. So we're not even going to have to ask you, what do you give this one? Uh, m- maybe I'll surprise myself. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll come in here and it's like, I was wrong. Hey, and maybe that's a twist. Maybe we watch it, and then we come back the next week and go, uh, maybe it wasn't a 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So there you go. Cecil B. Demented. It's on uh, Netflix. What was the final score on that, Max? Yeah, go ahead, Max. Uh, it was 26, I believe. Hold on. Let me get back to that. Oh, where did I write it down? Yeah, it was 26. Yeah, it was 26, I'm pretty sure. Oh, gosh. I lost it. <laughs> 7775. That's a 26. Yeah. 777. Yeah, the 26. <laughs> All right, right. 26 for Cecil B. Demented. That's on Netflix if you care to watch it. Yeah. Go for it. Hopefully it's still on. Hopefully. <laughs> Next week we're going to talk about the dead zone, so get back here for that. And as always, thank you for tuning tuning into the queue. If you'd like to leave your thoughts on this film, go do it. You go to thequefilmcast.net. Yeah, you go there. Not .gov, not .org. <laughs> oh, talk no. about .net. <laughs> Tell us what you think of this one or any of the films we've reviewed. So uh, there you go. Uh, next week, dead zone, get back here. And until then, uh, however it is you say, Q, Q film cast forever. Q film cast forever. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody 
comes to Hollywood.